Hi, I'm Brad, and I'm a level one chef. I'm Gabrielle, and I'm a level two chef. I am Saul, and I'm a level three chef. I like burritos because you're holding it in your hand. It's that cool tactile response of eating something whole, which really hits that weird reptilian part of your brain. You can fill it with all of your favorite things, which is what I plan to do today. When is a good time to make burritos? Every time, all the time. <laughs> For my protein, I'm gonna be doing eggs. Scrambled eggs are slop. The best way to capture slop is a burrito. I'm gonna be using short ribs today. They're fatty and they have a ton of flavor and they're really juicy. I'm going to make my burrito with Mexican sausage, chorizo, and uh, some hanga steak. First, we will crack the eggs into a large bowl. A little bit of salt, I'm gonna whisk. Because eggs have beautiful and complex membranes and you want to destroy all of them. First thing we're gonna do is sear our short ribs. So first season them with some salt and pepper on all the sides. I'm gonna grab this nice chorizo that you guys got for me. Cut the vine. We're gonna throw a little bit of oyster oil. oil. I'm gonna throw the chorizo in it. So that's what you wanna hear, the sear on it. I'm going to sear the three sides. Put them in there. We're going to put in some butter, then add the egg. I like it where it's like moist, but not oopy goopy. If it looks like a mashed up omelet, I think I'm doing it right. Set these on a tray over here to rest. At this point, I've reduced my heat by a lot. Pour in a dark beer of your choice, and then I'm gonna go ahead and start deglazing my pan, which is my favorite fancy cooking term for scraping all the crap off the bottom. I like eating chorizo because it's something that I grew up eating, so that makes me, you know, feel like I'm home. I'm going to put in my fire roasted tomatoes, my tomato paste, brown sugar, put in my chipotle chilies. Oop, mm. I almost dropped them. Okay, great, so this is getting close. So I'm just gonna grab the steak right now and cut it into small pieces. I wanna use all the fat from the chorizo to cook the uh, steak. A little bit of canola oil. My favorite ingredient is the tamarind paste. It's a little bit like a, like a date, but it has a little more potency and kick to it. Roasted garlic, allspice. Cinnamon, some thyme and a bay leaf, a little bit of orange zest, pea stock. And I'm gonna add the steak. Make sure I spread it and then it gets nice here. Even if you overcook it, still not dry. I know when it's done, when it looks almost not done, so that's when you take it off because it will continue to cook. All right, I'm putting my short ribs in. These are gonna be in here for about four to five hours depending on how long you can resist <laughs> eating them. That's it. I'm gonna turn this off. I'm not cooking the meat all the way because I don't want that to be really dry. That's how I, I cook it. All right, my eggs are done. Now for the fillings. We're gonna slice the avocado. What do I like about an avocado? I'm a millennial, so I've been taught I have to, and it's good fat. I have a really, really flavorful meat, so I tried to keep it pretty simple with my fillings. A little bit of oil. So I'm gonna start with my caramelized onions. I want my onions to basically sweat off some of that acidity and get really sweet. Spanish onion, regular cilantro, chicharron. What it is is a pork skin who has been dehydrated and then defried. So it's just like potato chips. Cilantro adds both some pop and a talking point. Like if you are making burritos for friends and you're like, hey, do you want cilantro? Then boom, there's a conversation. As you can tell, they are a totally different color and a totally different texture. Next up are my pinto beans. A really great way to turn pinto beans into something that's a little more exciting and has a little more texture to it is basically just by adding a can of refried beans into them. This is cheddar, cheddar cheese. cheese. I like cheddar because it's most often in my fridge. Oaxaca cheese, Mexican mozzarella. It's a little bit sharper and more Creamier. For my cheese, I'm using queso fresco. It's just gonna add like a nice creaminess to the inside of my burrito. And for my rice, I went with a basic white rice and I added in some chopped up cilantro because I wanted to add a little bit of freshness. I really wanted it to just serve as kind of a blank canvas for the rest of the flavors in this burrito. All right, my toppings are finished. For my sauce, I'm gonna be creating a family recipe passed down from generations. It's a very complicated compote of hot sauce and sour cream. 
I'm gonna be making a pineapple habanero salsa. I cut the bottom and the top off, and then I go around and take off all the sides. Probably about an inch slices the whole way down the pineapple. I'm going to make two sauces today. First, I'm going to make an avocado sauce. We're using three avocados for one burrito. <laughs> Sour cream, you add some sriracha to it. And now we have every secret sauce at any chain restaurant in the country. Get rid of the core, put them in a nonstick pan. Get that really nice brown caramely color. Now I'm gonna chop them up. Put everything into the food processor and turn it into a salsa. Put in my cilantro. cilantro. Everything on it, it's no wasting. Just a little bit of onion, raw garlic, supposed to be healthy for you. And then we add the serrano pepper. There's different types of peppers. Some they are for texture, flavor. Diced bell pepper, minced habanero for that extra spice. And my lime, lime juice. juice. It's gonna give a nice acidity. It also is gonna keep the avocado for turning black. A little bit of salt, and then a little bit of water. Okay, we're locked and loaded. And I'm just gonna go ahead and pulse this. You don't want it really smooth, you want it a little bit chunky. We're going to blend this until it's nice and smooth. Ready to go. Wow, I <laughs> Nero is very fragrant. It's a very powerful little pepper. And here is my salsa. Next, I'm going to make a tres chile sauce. Guajillo, chile morita, and for heat, we're using chile de árbol. We want to remove this part, and also the seeds. Just throw a little bit of oil. And then we're gonna add some morita. It's basically very similar to a dry chipotle. Get nice and toasted. We're gonna add only two chili de árbol. Really hot. Turn this off, you just add the water. This will make the pepper softer. So we're just gonna let it boil a little bit, and then we wanna remove them. So here you have the peppers. Then we're gonna add the onion. A little bit of oil. And I'm also gonna add some salt. Make the onion sweat. Clean the tomatillos. It's like the bitter cousin of the tomato. <laughs> And then plum tomatoes. They're a little bit sweeter than the other tomatillos. We add some garlic here. Cook this for 15, 20 minutes. We want to have a little sear in all of them. Looks good so far. Now we're going to add all of this to a blender. Chilies, vinegar, some salt. And I think it's ready. Tres chiles, salsa. And now let's prep my tortilla. I'm using a traditional flour, flour tortilla. tortilla. If you want to fold it, you got to have that flour. Getting them from the store out of a package is fine. I'm going to make the flour tortilla from scratch. So we're going to add the flour, the salt. Make sure the salt mixed in all the way. Now we're going to add the vegetable fat. The water little by little. Take it out of the Robocop. Add some flour into your hands and then you want to work the dough. Dough doesn't stick to your hands, that means it's ready. Now you let it sit for 15, 20 minutes. The longer you let it sit, the softer it will become. First, I'm gonna make sure it's nice and round. Just like you're making a pizza. Yeah. Normally a burrito, you will use a 12 inches flour tortilla. I think that's it. Now I'm gonna warm it up. Put a little heat on the stove top. Start cooking this in here. I'm just trying to get it warm on both sides. You see the bubbles start coming up. And if it does brown a little bit, that's okay. If it puffs up a little bit, that's okay. You just don't want to burn it. We don't want to cook it all the way because we want to keep it nice and flexible so you can roll the burrito. My tortilla is warm. Let's put this together. First, spread the sauce every which way. Kind of leave room for the edges because we're going to be folding it. The moment of truth, let's see. Oh my God, it smells so good. I'm so excited. I like to start with the rice because it soaks up all the juices and everything that's gonna be in there. Next, I'm going to do my refried beans and pinto bean mixture. Then uh, I'm gonna do a layer of cheese. cheese. We're gonna start with the white cheddar, and then we're gonna add the Oaxaca cheese. Now I'm gonna take the tortilla, put it on top, press it down to make sure the cheese sticks. Then we're just gonna flip it, and there you have it. Add our avocado, some Cilantro. Making a burrito is a lot like jazz. Just throw it all in there. Some beauty's gonna end up happening. My favorite part, which is the short ribs. When it started with chorizo, you add the steak. Keep it into one side because remember, you just wanna roll it. Also, don't put a lot. Then you add your eggs. Oh my gosh, hey eggs, how you doing? We forgot about you. We have our caramelized onions. Queso fresco. Tres chile salsa, avocado sauce, onions, some cilantro, some chicharron. Last but not least, our pineapple habanero salsa. It's really important not to overfill your burrito because then it's gonna be really hard to roll it up. 
Oh yeah, that's got too much stuff in it. So sometimes you overstuff your burrito. Good news, gang. Just eat what's in there until there's enough to fold it. I don't got time for shame. What's up, Epicurious? I'm gonna squeeze all of this in here, and then I'm gonna take my outer corner and tuck it and roll it and, okay, I did it. Now, if you want to secure your burrito, just put it back to the pan and then we'll close it. Now you need supreme confidence in your burrito to cut it in half. I would never do this at home, but I kind of want to brag, so I'm going to right now. And here is my burrito. And here is my burrito. And here's my burrito. All right, let's give it a try. Mm. Oh my god. Oh my god, it's so good. <laughs> the best part of my job, right here. It's really good. The meat's so tender. It has a ton of flavor in it. The sauce is really melted with the cheese, so it's just hitting you with some heat. Yeah, this is a great recipe. I can taste the uh, crispiness of the chicharron. The spiciness from the um, tres chiles morita. It's just a dream come true on a burrito. All three of our chefs made different and delicious burritos. Brad made a breakfast burrito with scrambled eggs as his protein. They're easier than meat. Eggs cook very quickly. The whites start to set around 140 degrees Fahrenheit and the yolks at 150 degrees Fahrenheit. So if you're in a hurry and want a very high quality protein, eggs are perfect. Gabrielle added a complex protein in the form of well-seasoned beef short ribs. She cooked them slowly, first with a sear followed by hours of braising. Depending on how long you can resist <laughs> eating them. Braising tenderizes meat by converting the connective tissue collagen into softer gelatin. She used beer to deglaze her pan after searing the short ribs. It's a great beer. Saul used a combination of hanger steak and chorizo. Hanger steak from the short plate of the cow is a coarser cut of meat with concentrated beef flavor. Chorizo is a highly seasoned, slightly spicy pork-based sausage. It's semi-cured, so it's not as hard as cured chorizo and requires cooking. Saul took it out of the casing so that it had a crumbly texture which combined well with the finely diced steak. Brad kept it simple with avocado, shredded cheddar, and chopped cilantro. Avocado is high in monounsaturated fatty acids, and cheddar is higher in saturated fat. Both add to satiety, which helps keep you fueled through the morning. Gabrielle cooked onions, which made them sweeter through the caramelization reaction, balancing the slight tang from her meat mixture. She warmed whole pinto beans and combined them with refried beans. These have complex polysaccharides like raffinose and stachyose that can add a creamy quality and texture variation. The white rice used is very neutral and added a starchy component to her burrito. Saul's filling included raw onion, which is savory and crunchy from starches that soften when heated. He also added chicharrones, which are seasoned deep fried pork skins that are intensely crunchy. It's just like potato chips. And two cheeses white cheddar, and Oaxaca. Oaxaca cheese has a stringy quality like mozzarella and melts well because it's high in moisture. Brad went with a simple but delicious mixture of sriracha and sour cream. The sour cream decreases the spice level of the hot sauce by coating capsaicin chemoreceptors on our tongue. For her salsa, Gabrielle brought sweetness with grilled pineapple and added heat from habanero chilies. She added bright, fresh notes with her cilantro and bell pepper and acidity with a squeeze of lime. Saul made two sauces. First, he made a smooth sauce that was mostly avocado with a touch of lime and cilantro to cut the high amount of fatty acids. He then made a trace chili sauce that packed a spicy, smoky heat from its three different kinds of chilies. He also included blackened onions and toasted peppers which form pyrazine compounds that provide a charred flavor. He added tomatillos, which are acidic and sharp, and plum tomatoes, which provided umami from their glutamic acid. 
Brad and Gabrielle used store-bought flour tortillas, which are soft and stretchy and don't break at larger sizes like corn tortillas would. They both lightly heated their tortillas, which increased their pliability. Saul made his own flour tortilla, which allowed him to control its flavor and texture. He used a wheat-based, unbleached, all-purpose flour. I used to be a pizza guy, so when I decided to start making flour tortillas, I was like, ah, I got this. The rolling and structural integrity of the burrito makes all the difference. You want to layer so that flavors and textures are balanced while maximizing the ease of eating. Brad anchored his burrito by first spreading his sriracha sour cream on the tortilla. This allowed the sauce to cover a greater surface area than pouring it on at a later point would. He then added his cheese, avocado, and cilantro and eggs, but initially overstuffed his burrito. Overstuffing can prevent the burrito from rolling into a closed cylinder, or worse, it could cause your tortilla to burst. Gabrielle started her assembly with rice, then added her beans, meat, and other ingredients. Rice is starchy, causing friction with the tortilla, and helps prevent everything else from sliding around or spilling out. Saul's assembly was unique. He first melted cheddar cheese and then added the tortilla on top. The melted cheese adhered to the tortilla, acting as a moisture barrier, and kept it from getting soggy. Hopefully our chefs have shown you some new tips to incorporate the next time you're rolling up burritos. 